What's up, FRT community? Asaya Cotton comes to me today and she says, Hey, I watched this video and she loves the breakdown. If you haven't seen it, it's the adrenergic versus the anticholinergic breakdown of those drugs. So we give adrenergic drugs and we give anticholinergic drugs. Now, Asaya's question is, why would we give both of these together? Because the video does not go in to talk about Duoneb. It talks about albuterol as an adrenergic and talks about apotropium bromide and teotropium bromide as uh, anticholinergics or parasympatholytics. But it does not talk about when we combine them. And there's some confusion here, Asaya, on your part in the idea that why would you give two drugs, one that promotes bronchodilation and one that doesn't, one that reduces mucus production and one that doesn't, seems like they counterbalance each other. Well, let me break it down for you, okay? So this, this video is solely dedicated to the breaking down of Duoneb and how it works to help our patients, okay? So, video is over Duoneb. And we know that Duoneb is albuterol and atrovent. Now, I just put the brand name up here because it's easier than spelling out apotropium bromide. But we know that this is apotropium bromide. You should know that this is apotropium bromide. Now, when you give these two drugs together, you have to understand you're giving two drugs, albuterol and atrovent. Okay, so let's break these two drugs down. We know that albuterol is a sympathomimetic. I should have used more on my board, right? A sympathomimetic, which means it mimics the sympathetic nervous system. Now, atrovent is a para sympatholytic. The lytic means that it blocks the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, let's just break these two terms down for a second, okay? When we talk about the sympathetic nervous system, you have these effects. When the sympathetic nervous system is, I'm going to use the term lit up, okay? When it lights up, this is the effects that it has on the pulmonary system. It increases bronchodilation and it decreases mucus production, okay? That's the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the parasympathetic nervous system increases bronchoconstriction and increases mucus production. Now, this looks like something we like, right? We want drugs that increase bronchodilation, decrease inflammation, and decrease mucus production. So this is good. Bronchoconstriction and increased mucus production is bad. We don't like that as respiratory therapists. Now, this is how the body works to just protect itself. So when allergens or irritants are inhaled, the parasympathetic nervous system via the vagus nerve says, says these vaguely mediated response says, Airways, get small and coat yourself so that this air irritant or this allergen doesn't cause problems within our airways. That's just the way the body's made to work. When the sympathetic nervous system is lit up, the fight or flight system, the body says, open up the airways, decrease mucus production so that we can get lots of oxygen out into the lungs, into the body, and out to the tissues. So... That's the breakdown of these two systems. Now, think about albuterol and atrovent. Albuterol is a sympathomimetic, which means it creates this response. Good, right? Increase bronchodilation, decrease mucus production. When you think about atrovent or ipotropium bromide, take it a step further and talk about teotropium bromide, you're talking about a parasympatholytic. The lytic is key here because that term means to block. It means to, to not allow the parasympathetic action to take place. So when you give atrovent, then you are blocking these things, which sounds good, right? You don't want bronchoconstriction. We don't want increased mucus production. So let's block them. 
And that's what Atrovent does. When you put these two drugs together, Albuterol and Atrovent, you get Duoneb. And Duoneb has this effect to where the Albuterol is seeking out beta-2 receptors to initiate this response. The Atrovent is seeking out cholinergic receptors. So we call these, these are, if you break it down even further, you get into the muscarinic receptors and the nicotinic receptors, okay? So when you seek out muscarinic receptors, these are cholinergic receptors that lead to bronchoconstriction and increased mucus production, okay? But if atrovent binds to these receptors and blocks them, from being able to be attached to by acetylcholine, then you get a blocking of this happening. And this is how Duoneb has its effect. This is the end, this is the end game. Albuterol promotes bronchodilation and decreased mucus production. Atrovent, apotropin bromide, spirevid, teotropin bromide, they block effects of the parasympathetic nervous system. So you don't have one that's causing bronchodilation and one that's not doing anything or, or the opposite. You have one that's causing bronchodilation and the second drug is blocking bronchoconstriction from happening. You have one that is decreasing receptors that will lead to or decrease, you're attaching to receptors that will decrease mucus production and you have Atrovent, the other drug, that is attaching to receptors that will block the production of increased secretions. And that's how Duoneb works. Okay? So, Asaya, thank you for asking this question. There's your answer. If you have any other further questions, please send me another comment below. I'll clarify it even further. Pharmacology. I love it. I know you do too. Not really. Students hate pharmacology. And it's okay. But you have to have this base knowledge of why we would give somebody Duoneb. First of all, you got to understand that Atrovent and our parasympatholytics are maintenance drugs for COPD and to be used in conjunction with albuterol for acute status asthmaticus that does not respond to albuterol by itself or beta-2 agonists by themselves, albuterol or levalbuterol Zopinex. So there's, there's a very small population of patients that should be receiving Duoneb. I say small population. It's actually one of the fastest growing populations. But outside of your COPD ears and your acute asthmatics, you shouldn't have somebody on the floor receiving Duoneb that doesn't have some type of underlying pulmonary, history, pulmonary complication that requires maintenance therapy to block bronchoconstriction and increase mucus production. Simple as that, guys. So... Hey, I hope this helps everybody. Leave me a comment. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about it. Love to hear from you. Hope everybody's enjoying the last week of their break. Talk to you soon.